Hey, True Believers, Englantine Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins where we take a look at any comic book superhero, villain, or team. This time around, we're looking at Death's Head, thanks to the commission by Fragminion. Alrighty, so, created by Simon Furman, Jeff Senior, Death's Head's been referred to as a cyborg and a robot, but he refers to himself as a mechanoid, a machine life made to resemble a humanoid. Um... Created in an extra-dimensional realm of Styracos, which shifted between magical area zones and... Okay, anyway, uh, he f was going to first appear in Transformers. And since they wanted to protect their copyright against Hasbro, who, because of contracts, could lay claim to it, they decided to go on ahead and print a one-page story called Tex High Noon. And guess what? Yeah, we got that here, too. So anyway... <laughs> I do want to say thank you to Fragminion for commissioning this. Now, if you want to commission a, a video of your own, by all means, the link is in the description below. Go to Ko-Fi and just pick out any topic, any uh, superhero, any supervillain. Like I said, I've got bad comic beatdowns where we talk about bad books. Really that bad where you're like, wait, that's got a bad reputation, but I think it's pretty good. We've got comic books were better, which are my top tens, the comic book origin stories like this one as well. I do minority characters, any, any character whatsoever, and really that good where we test a story's good reputation. So go on over there. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. What's not fun, however, is the reason YouTube's been choking this channel out. And uh, to combat that, I actually started another one that I'm trying to get up to a thousand subs. And when I do, all the videos are going to start going over there. So please go on over to Old Man Comics. You could look in YouTube. You look up Old Man Comics England Teen. You'll find it. And subscribe there. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well and make sure your notifications are on. Anyway, thanks to everybody who's done that. And let's take a look at High Noon Text starring Death's Head. In my business, you make enemies, yes? You dirty, low-down, stink bounty hunter, I'll blow you apart! Take Tex, straightforward contract to kill his brother, burn his farm, and massacre his livestock. And what happens, huh? He takes it personal. Just business, inform him with a smile, and he vows to kill me. No sense of humor, yes? In my case, if I can't kill for profit, at least have a laugh. High noon, Tex. <laughs> I gave him a moment. A moment before I triggered the explosives in the dummy, he didn't laugh. I was right, yes. No sense of humor. Alrighty, there you go, gang. The very first appearance of Death's Head. But not the one we're going to be looking at today. So, uh, not just the one, I should say. I thought it was okay. It, was, uh, it had a sense of humor to it. And I guess you get an idea of who Death's Head's going to be. So, why don't we find out? exactly what that first appearance was and we'll take a look at uh transformers uk number 113 and as always we start with the cover transformers blazing across the top got optimus prime in the box here rodimus prime speaks out bring me the head of galvatron i guess that's rodimus prime and in all honesty this isn't a very tr intriguing cover this is not one that's going to bring in new readers maybe you know spark up a little bit for the old but I think it's a fail. The book starts off on a wanted poster, and it's not so much the wanted Galvatron, dead or alive, 10,000 Shannix reward, contact Rodimus Prime, Autobot Commander Cybertron, that I'm particularly drawn to. It's the fact that we're on a robot world named El Pasos. No, no we're not. Okay, change this immediately. That is just silly. Anyway, we see a hand pointing at the poster saying, well, what's all this then? We find out that it's Death's Head who's looking at the poster, asking, Galvatron, huh? Sounds tough. Wonder how tough. 10,000 Shannix, eh? A lot of money. Rodimus Prime must want this Galvatron pretty bad, huh? How bad? I'm guessing bad enough to put $10,000 on a bounty, but, you know, let's try to figure that out, Death's Head. So the bartender's like, wow, yeah, he should be offering more for a bounty hunter of your caliber, which kind of pisses Death's Head off, and he says, I'm not a bounty hunter. Don't like that term, understand? Freelance peacekeeping agent, yes? For certain financial remunerations, of course. 
And then Deathhead asks, why does Rodimus Prime seek Galvatron? And the bartender says, well, I suppose it all began when the Planet Eater Unicron decided to destroy the Transformers' home world of Cybertron. The planet's two moons were consumed first. And it looked as though Cybertron itself would soon follow in either mode. It became clear that nothing could stop Unicron. But while the battle was being fought outside, a far more crucial struggle ensued inside Unicron. Galvatron, the mighty Decepticon warrior created by Unicron himself from the broken remains of their once leader Megatron, fought the young Autobot Hot Rod. By rights, Hot Rod should have died, but the Autobots' creation matrix, their sacred life force, was to prove his savior. At Hot Rod's touch, the casing opened, releasing the full power of the matrix. It took what had been a brash, hot-headed soldier and reshaped him, transformed him into Autobots' new leader, Rodimus Prime. Galvatron fought on, but by then, the outcome was never really in doubt. Once his foe had been subdued, Rodimus Prime hurled Gavaltron through Unicron's metal hide and out into deep space to his almost certain doom. Oh look, this is in the Transformers movie. I gotta see that sometime. Once the Matrix had done its work and destroyed Unicron, Rodimus Prime must have thought his troubles were over. Not so. Little confession here, guys. I'm not the biggest fan of Death's Head. This was a commissioned video. Thank you very much to... Uh to Fragminion. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of Transformers, so in all honesty, everything that that bartender just said, I have no idea what any of it means. Alrighty, let's get back to business. So Deathhead's like, so, okay, because uh, Galvatron's dead, right? And he says, no, no, you see, they can't find his body. So Rodimus Prime has spent all this time searching for Galvatron that other Decepticons were able to rise up and stand against the Autobots. And Dusthead grabs the poster and walks away. The bartender's like, hey, where are you going? He says, I'm going to go find and kill Galvatron. That doesn't exactly excite the bartender. He draws a gun saying, not before you pay for those three quarts of oil you just downed. And Dusthead's like, whoa, throws a card on the table, says, hey, take this, it'll settle the debt. But when the bartender looks at the card, he's like, hey, wait, this is blank and worthless. And that's when Dusthead basically beats the teetotal heck out of him. And then walks away, not paying. That's kind of rude. And so Dusthead begins his journey to find Gaveltron, figuring that, hey, you know what? His lieutenants, his right-hand men, they're the ones that are going to know where he is, or at least have a good idea of it. So he says to himself, as Cyclonus and Scourge, it follows that they, if any, would have been taken into Galvatron's confidence and may know where he is, which is why the first port of call in my search for Galvatron is Cybertron. Wow, I know some of those words must have meant something to someone out there. Unfortunately, not to me. If I were to learn it, that meant I had to have paid attention to the uh, Michael Bay Transformer movies, and that's too much to ask of anyone. Then we cut to Cybertron, where Scourge and Cyclonus, or whatever his name is, are flying around saying, Hey, that shockwave's a douche, and he thinks he could order us around, and we're tired of him. I can't wait to see his face until... And that's when Death's Head steps up and says, Galvatron returns, and they're like, Say what? And he's like, I'm Death's Head. You heard of me, yes? Because people in the UK answer their own questions after they ask them? So Death's Head says, figures you guys know where he is and you're about to tell me that. No, we aren't. And they start shooting at him. He's like, oh, man, you guys just got to understand you got your superiors. And he and like Scourge is like, I heard of you, Bounty Hunter. And he does the whole I don't like Bounty Hunter's speech. And then Scourge actually lands a shot on Death's Head. Oh, it was Cyclonus. Sorry, I got it wrong. Anyway, Cyclonus knocks him down. He runs up with this big old metal bar and tries to hit him, but Deathhead raises his hand. He's like, you die! And Deathhead says, I hope you won't think me rude, Cyclonus, if I reserve that fate for you. And he belts Cyclonus right across the face. I'll give you one more chance, yes? I'm going to ask you where Galvatron is. Give me the right answer, and you walk. Give me a wrong answer. And I'll make you wish you never created. So tell me, where's Galvatron? Wait, wait. Whatever else he is, Galvatron's not worth dying for. I'll tell you what I know, or at least what I suspect. And later, Mission 531, Log Tape continues. Cyclonus talked, and what's more, I believed him. 
Seems he scourging Galvatron once time jumped using this equipment 20 years into the past of a distant planet called Earth. He reckoned that if Galvatron had fled anywhere, it would be to the same past. I agreed. So look out, Galvatron. Look out, Earth. Look out, 1987. Because here I come. Next, First Blood. Actually, we're going to go and talk about Death's Head origin in The Body in Question. It's a graphic novel that basically brings together his origin story from the comic book Strip, which was published in Marvel UK. And I apologize for being brief while telling the origin story, but it's a 60-page graphic novel and it would raise the time of the video to 40 minutes. And let's make it a little bit shorter than that if we can. And the story begins in a time that has no... And the story begins in a place that is not a place, a time where time has no meaning, and we see a guy running. He says, D didn't lose him, gotta get away. No, spikers, can't let that stop me, and he bursts through these things that previously he was afraid of, only to land in what looks like a huge mud puddle at the bottom. And then finally, somebody comes up behind him. He screams, good hunt, oh yes. Not great, good, but satisfying. Oh yes, satisfying. But the prey decides he's tired of running and turns a gun on his stalker who grabs him by the face and says, no, no techno today, just magic. And with a bright light, he fits a glove on him and says, good fit. And we see the man burned in the mud puddle. Good fit. Then we cut to yet another man running a place, namely New York. This is a place, a time specifically October 2nd, 2020 where time has meaning and the guy's saying to himself time i was out of here got to get to a place where i can lie low fingers don't fail me now and ah and he sees a big arm grab him by the coat through a windshield and of course it's death head who pulls the bad guy out of the car and yes you're about to find out that he's a bad guy and for some reason death said is really curious about his insurance i know they're trying to joke but i think they lean a little bit too hard on it but the guy ends up getting away, and this starts off a merry little chase, where, of course, he calls him a bounty hunter, and Deathhead gets mad about that. Gotta admit that for, for the first time I was reading it, I was like, well, you know, they are just kind of throwing away a couple of pages to show us a chase. It's like when they add on a long car chase to an action scene just to pad the time. However, I do have to say I like the sequential art. It tells the story. We, you don't have to read the words to understand what's happening. The chase leads up to a cop who holds his gun on Death's head, and you know, because Rogan's like, Whoa, dude, Death's head's trying to kill me. And Death's head's like, Do you know who this is? And when he hears the name, the cop's like, What? And Rogan knocks him out and steals a space bike and tries to get away. But of course, Death's head is having none of that, ends up jumping it onto him from, uh, from above and wrecking both of them, basically. Rogan still tries to make his escape, and Deathhead says, well, they want him alive, but dead's good too, kablam, and shoots him through the chest. Well, conveniently, or inconveniently, Rogan dies in the arms of a woman who yells at Deathhead, and Deathhead's like, what are you talking about? He's a rabid dog, he has to be put down, but for a moment he's like, well, is she right? But we find out from the cops who show up and pick her up that her name's Acid Alice and she is his partner. And the cops are like, well, that bounty hunter looks sad, but he should be proud of it. And he's thinking, you know, well, maybe uh, I, I am in it for the hunt rather than the profit. But he likes the time he's in at least because he doesn't have to deal with any delusional kids who think they're Death's Head partner. Cut to a delusional kid who thinks he's Death said partner, uh, who says that he's going to be meeting some woman uh, that called him up, said they had a job, but he wasn't going to show up, but he's a little curious to find out what it's all about, so here he is. And that's when a vulture shows up, but the kid's like, whoa, dude, you're not Death said partner. I'm Death Head's partner. And I kid you not, that's the dialogue. He's arguing with a bird about who's Death Head's partner. So finally, the woman he's looking for shows up, and she's like really statuesque, and she's like, hey, where's my husband? He's like, yo, what? So he tries to be smooth with her, but she's not buying it, wraps him up in a whole bunch of dark shadow bands that she calls her ex-lovers, 
And he says, well, I don't know where they are. And she says, you don't have to speak, just think. And finds out that, hey, he actually doesn't know where Death's Head is. And she's like, okay, you guys can kill him. But then she hears, no, the kid's mine. And she yells, Lupex. And we see some black guy jump from the top. And he's all frothy at the mouth yelling, Name's Big Shot, sister. You want to stay in possession of all four limbs? Back off now. Death's head owes me big, and I intend to collect. And he's just yelling and screaming about how this brat's his way to death shot, and oh, what's going on? And uh, the kid, while they're arguing, says, well, I'm glad I brought along a way to chicken out. And the Lupex guy just yells at the woman a little bit more, and she says, okay, you can have him, but... uh." He's escaping. And we see the kid escaping towards a spaceship that he called up from the bottom of the ocean. And while he's running, he's cursing Death's Head for not being there. And he's like, dude, if you escape through time again. And the woman is hearing his thoughts. And she's like, oh, okay. Time, time, of course. That's why you stayed hidden from me. I dream this world, not its past and futures, but now. Now I have you. And we see that Lupex is still holding on to the spaceship as they go through some sort of warp, but the woman's yelling, go to him, big shot, find Death's Head for me. And that's the end of the first book. Honestly, I heard this was the origin of Death's Head, but I'm not getting anything very origin-y out of it. Book two begins with someone watching the woman, but he's just, it, in all honesty, the dialogue's nonsensical. And it isn't exactly clear what the motivations are here. Then we cut to 2020 where we see the ship landing in some sort of docking hallway sort of alleyway kind of thing. It does a little bit of a crash landing and we see Lupex seeing Death's Head and Death's Head just kind of looks surprised because he sees his partner wannabe and uh, Vulture and Lupex yelling, REVENGE! And we see Lupex still frothing at the mouth. And he's like, oh, revenge. And Death says, like, this isn't fair. And the partner guy's like, get down, get down. And then Lupex shoots him in the head. But Death says, like, dude, there's no profit in revenge. But then Lupex jumps at him. Words, just words. You always talked a good fight, robot, but words won't save you this time. I am the Avenger, the instrument of her vengealust. I am Death. And Death says, like, you're a loony. And Lupex punches him in the head. Don't talk, just die. So Death's Head's a little bit confused about the her that Lupex is talking about. And Lupex is like, don't play dumb. But then the cops show up and they're like, hey, get off the mechanoid. And Lupex is like, no, and fires and shoots one of the cops off of his little sky scooter. And Death's Head uses the distraction to knock him down and said, I don't understand the revenge thing, but I sure am going to enjoy the next few minutes. So Death's Head and Lupex fight while the cops kind of cheer on Death's Head in the battle, talking about how to barbecue him, I think. I think that's what the dialogue is. And Lupex is all, dude, you're just a bounty hunter like the rest of us, and you enjoy it. And Death's Head's like, whoa, I'm not like you. And Lupex takes the time of the distraction to barbecue death's head and yell die which has uh the potential partner and the vulture worried as he's and lupex is just like die 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 as he's heading towards the the death's head's body as it's fallen and laying on the ground he is going to die he knows this as his eyes are pressed back into sockets slowly crushing delicate neural circuits icy blackness gathers and with it a forgotten memory of his creation of the woman and her words and suddenly having never questioned his lost past having never needed to know he badly wants answers but it is too late all right 30 something pages in and finally we get to the origin cool but before lupex can land that final blow a blast of energy knocks him away and holds him up against the wall and he's yelling but i had him i did your bidding he was dead why and the person watching the woman says, yes, tell, why so? And the lady says, oh, because I get to kill him. And she ends up destroying Lupex. But when uh, Death's Head hears the word Lupex, he's like, Lupex? And then he's teleported out of there. And we see Death's Head as he arrives at his destination. And T. Lupex is so but I. I am, oh yes. And Death's Head's like, Dad? And that's the end of book two. 
And Death's Head kind of does a little bit of diagnostics and realizes that he, all of his systems are failing, and his, he sees his dad again, and what ensues is basically one big fight that is kind of nonsensical because the only dialogue is that half-broken English kind of thing that we've been getting from his dad so far, and it, it really does not come off right. But don't get me wrong, it's like the other action sequence where... The story was really light, but the art was strong. The sequential art really works, and you could tell the what, what's going on and the pro progress of the story through the art. So that's spot on. But then it's like the writer remembers he has a story to tell and begins to write the bad guy here, Dad, as, uh, as an actual person, or at least a character we can understand. And in all of his ramblings, he calls himself Lupex, which makes you think, okay, the other guy was being controlled by him as well. And he's talking about wanting to take over Death's Head body. And Death's Head's like, well, you know what? There's not too much energy in this body left. And if this guy is my dark side, if I fall into being a bounty hunter like him, and uh, then he just begins to remember. And I do have to say, I am a bit irritated. I'm done with the guy's Yoda talk. It, it just bothers me. I'm sorry, it does. So anyway, they're looking at the woman and they're saying, Aha, better oh yes than you, I am, she thinks. Cheated, she believes, cheated of her vengeance. The youngling and the bird on them will she vent blood red rage. And Des says, like, big deal. Well, on second thought, rather like the vulture, Yes. Enough before they hunt a final gift to you, your past. Welcome home, body, to the world you never knew birthed you. Stracos. It's Ty Rejuda, am I, oh yes, as master of the striking zone. None dare challenge alone. I wield the magic and techno. Not meant to contain such power for long where moral flesh and bones and soon another vessel had, be, had to be taken. And yeah, that's why I'm just, I'm, I'm done with it. Yo to speak. But the origin continues. Again and again, all that is Lupex passed from shell to shell each time between my power grew more and the vessels emptied yet faster. So the child of magic and techno was birthed, a metal body mighty enough to forever contain my energies. But before father could become son, gone you were beyond my reach. Oh, yes. So why give me a personality, eh? Easier to possess a mindless body. And he says, just keep talking. Not my work, another fashion to your mind. Pyra, I thought. Not so, ah, Pyra. Beautiful, deadly Pyra came to me, she did. Loved me, thought. So Death's Head uses his distraction to attack, but unfortunately it's not successful, and his father blasts him, yelling at him and calling him body. That's gotta hurt. And Death's Head tries to kill him with his gun, but unfortunately it doesn't work. And Lupex says, well, sometimes techno works, sometimes magic. And he blasts him over the edge and says, run, the hunt begins. Which I think is stupid. He's right there. Why send him off to be hunted when he's right in front of you? But as Death's Head lands, he's like, okay, the guy has no idea what he's up against. I have got completely rebuilt in 8062. It's more than just superficial. Uh, he may not be so superior after all. I'm beginning to see a pattern. As he's thinking this, he gets shot in the head again. And there's Lupex saying, Enough! Over is the hunt. The realm is techno if you claim the body as your own. But Death's Head decides he's going to run away instead. And this makes the bad guy proud. He's like, Hey, I broke the hunter. And as he's uh, thinking to himself, Well, all he has to do is wait for me to die and take the body. Uh, the bad guy just kind of bursts up in what looks like blood and volcanic ash, and he speaks as Yoda speak, but uh, Death's Head creeps into this particular building that he's standing near. But it seems like it's not enough. As uh, Death's Head climbs the stairs of this particular building, he, uh, he just kind of gives up. He realizes there's nothing left. And the bad guy there, Lupex, is yelling, Aha, I am the master of the hunt, and it's all about the hunt. And Lupex catches up with Death's Head, and he's about to put his essence into him. He realizes, wait a second, my magics don't work here. Death's Head's like, but I am fully functional, and then stabs Lu Lupex through the chest. Which looks like Lupex is about to explode from, while Death's Head kind of taunts him. Rest in pieces, yes? Or a farewell to arms, perhaps? Tch. No literary appreciation, some people. 
And like in Lord of the Rings, Lupex runs off the edge of a tower and just lands right on the ground where Death Set's like, Ha! And I hope it takes you a long time to die. You thought you were better than me? Go spit. That's basically what his dialogue says. So Death Set decides he will kill him and telling him that, Hey, look, you know, I don't, uh, I don't get off on killing. I do it for money or for survival. And as he lands the last blow, he's like, wait a second, who's going to give me a ride home? And he sees that his mom's behind him as she's saying, hey, you got my sense of humor. And she tells Death's Head that, yep, everything that man said was true. I was there to steal his secrets. And he, she was even the one that gave Death's Head his personality. And the reason she gave the personality was because it contrasted the way that Lupex killed. And he knew that if, uh, she knew that if Lupex tried to possess Death's Head, he would fight back and kill him. Or so she thought. And so she tells Death's Head, hey, enjoy your freedom. And the partner's like, dude, you gonna let her walk away? You should go kill her. And he's like, eh, there's no profit in that. What you gonna do? Parents, right? So there you go, gang. Two first appearances and an origin story of Death's Head. What did you think? I thought that the first two were fun, and the last one was okay. Uh, they they spread it over a couple of books, and I did not like Lupex's Yoda talk. That was starting to irritate me. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to click like and share, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you haven't done it already. But YouTube needs you to turn on those notifications on your cell phone and everything before they actually work. Also, if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to, uh, what is it called, Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till. You know, help us uh, keep the lights on. This is the way we're trying to make a living. You know, help us keep making videos for you. And speaking of making videos for you, if you want to commission a video like Fragminion did this Death's Head one right here, go on over to Ko-Fi. Once again, link's in the description below. And pick a topic. Any topic will do. Pick out a character or anything like that. And uh, just tell us which one you want us to do. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what have you. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, some, but it's always interesting to see what you guys come up with. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done this, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.